So I'm excited today to do a tour of the new Harry Potter store in New York's Flatiron. I'm joined today by Gab Beta, who is the founder and creative director of Whereabouts Studio. Whereabouts Studio is a retail strategy and design studio that concentrates on developing pop-ups and concept stores. And I thought it'd be great to have her come and talk to me about her experience at the Harry Potter store. Hey, Gab. Hi, Pierce. How are you? Thanks great. for having me. It's great to have you here. So tell me, did, how was the experience overall? How was the, the impression? Uh, man, if I had to sum it up in a couple words, I would say I felt like a kid again. Being a consultant that looks at stores all the time, this really felt way more than a store. And it's clear in their strategy when walking through um, the store experience, just how it's the opposite of a store. Um, they both infused a museum-esque approach by placing props all across the environment, um, both on the first and the second floor of the store. They integrated VR by bringing a sense of what you would get from Harry Potter World and Disney into the store. And they had a series of um, amazing uh, shops and store within a store that were built as if you felt like you were in the Harry Potter universe. So I, I just say like right off the bat, what we're gonna describe today is not your typical store environment. We're infusing a lot of really interesting experiences into one um, amazing customer experience for their fans. I'm sure there's still a lot to learn whatever type of retailer or brand you work for. Absolutely. Um, so what I thought would be you know, a great way to go through it today is to just talk about some of the key experiences. There's more than what I'm going to be describing here, but the ones that are top of mind for ret retailers to be able to take with them into their own stores to try to optimize their experiences. So we can go through design. Let's, um, so let's do that. Why didn't we um, have a walkthrough of the experience? Perfect. So um, this is, it's important to know that this is actually a mega space. It's two, um, they were able to consolidate space in New York City by having both an atrium, which was the first floor experience, and a cellar. So they activated the basement um, of New York City stores, which is not very typical, um, to be able to bring to life actually a cellar experience that you would see in the own films as well as in the books. So um, two floor experience. So on the first floor, um, what we saw really prevalent um, was gamification. Um, I know that there's a lot of store companion apps that are out there, but the Harry Potter one is a meaty app that has a lot of layers to that experience. They added a very sophisticated layer, which actually can be activated at Disneyland as well. So Disneyland and the stores as a way to integrate augmented reality through actual props that you can scan, you can scan in store. So as you're going through the store, you'll notice in various uh, walls, there are certain shelves that have props on it. This is something that people were crowded around in the store trying to get a sense of what does uh, Harry Potter's wand actually look like. These were not replicas, these were actual props. In order to encourage both the fans of the, the parents of the fans or the kids, they were running around to the different props and scanning the outside of the prop. This sense of gamification opened up um, an app to give more detail behind the prop and what scenes of the movie it was featured in. While people were looking at that, they were able to scroll down after they digested all that information and would unlock a secret code. The secret code was essentially a series of 10 letters that you can unlock between the hundreds of props that they had across the store. People were running around, they screenshotted the different letters of the codes. And then when they unlocked the code, of what it revealed, that was a secret password that unlocked a gift behind the um, behind the store. It was the store counter. So when I I didn't get to go through the entire thing, but I unlocked a couple to my credit, and it really was awesome. Like people were obsessing over this thing. So I think just tactically, something to take away with that is obviously your audience here. They are fans, but they are kids. So if you have a sense of a younger audience that are inside your stores. What I think what's really important is that they were in, able to increase, probably triple their dwell time by being able to activate an experience like this. Um, it also gave people a sense of going through the entire store in order to do something. So if you're ever struggling with trying to get into the dark area of the back of your store and just get more eyeballs behind those products, this is a great way to use gamification, one of the best that I've seen. 
That's super interesting. What else is happening at um, when you kind of first answer in this kind of first floor atrium space? Yeah. Um, so the other thing that I wanted to talk about was the cafe. Um, so the Butter Beer Bar, if there's any fans that are listening to this, um, this is obviously a major aspect of the book. And they brought it to life through um, probably half of the first floor um, was devoted to this Butter Beer Bar. And it was a um, like a coffee shop experience that had a sense of pastries. And what was so cool about this that you can see featured in the video is they really started to infuse a lot of magic behind what you were doing doing inside of this space. Every single detail was thought out. Um, when you were looking to order your butter beer, the actual sign was floating. Um, so there were little details of magic that just kept the dream alive for everyone that was inside of the store. Um, there was also a collectible um, aspect to it. So by upcharging an extra $5, um, you were able to keep the collectible mug that was only available in the um, butter beer bar store. People were actually bartering them on the floor asking like, are you sure you don't want one? Can I have one for myself? And um, they just wanted to have more in their collection. So by not only creating this really amazing experience that brought you into what it was like to be in the butter beer shop in the actual book, you were there and the magic was just extremely prevalent as you were going through it. So um, this was something that, um, just something to note is it wasn't accessible to anybody on the street. You had to be able to access the whole store and go through it in order to ex um, in order to be part of the experience. So as you think about your own cafes, um, I think it's really important to just know, you know, what, what is the purpose behind this space? Do you want them to have it at the beginning of the experience? Do you want to have it at the end of the experience? For this, it really created um, the sense of surprise and delight where the last thing that you remember is this takeaway and gift that you didn't even need to, you don't feel like you paid for yourself. Um, and that sticks with you as you go through the store to just keep the optimism and the positivity alive and well. That's really interesting. Let's, um, let's look at some of the other areas and the other kind of takeaways you got. Um, so the second part that I wanted to talk about was the second floor of the experience, which um, did a really amazing job with um, activating the store within a store uh, design strategy. As a design um, strategy firm, we get all the time brands and retailers that want to be able to integrate a store within a store format into their space. And a lot of times they're only going, to, they're only really thinking about one store or one, you know, small capsule store. The Harry Potter store had four different store within a store formats um, that were pop-ins that really had a world of their own, a completely separate space that you walked into that brought you into a different part of the Harry Potter story. Um, the one that I want to be able to talk about is the House of Minalima, which is um, actually the prop artists and designers that designed all of the stationery at the Harry Potter store. So it's important to note here that the purpose behind their format for this specific store was to bring people behind the scenes fans behind the scenes for this really important aspect to the films as well as the books that was brought to life right before their eyes. So um, this store was not only, you can see the details in this video, it was extremely detailed and you know, down to the actual window display of the store made it feel like you were on a high street and there within the book. So um, within this environment, you can see that they had anywhere from prop replicas to limited edition posters and a little bit of a history lesson on this amazing design studio out of London um, that this shop is a part of. So it was really fantastic. And I, I think that just by nature of seeing how the design is changing as you're walking into this space, it just brings you into um, a completely different mindset um, to get a sense of who these important characters are um, as part of the Harry Potter universe. Um, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's interesting that um, obviously prop design, uh, um, prop designers really sweat the details um, in terms of what they're doing and um, how, uh, you know, often it's missed or glossed over when you actually see these films or TV shows. Um, and it's uh, interesting how uh, the retailer designers realize that they could lean into that and actually bring that stuff to life. They're kind of to bring bring these secrets to life uh, in the store for sure the it wasn't just the design of the space like every aspect of theater was activated when they were designing these stores the music changed in every environment that you were in 
Um, the lighting changed. Um, they even had a sense of these like surprise and delight moments where they had real life props that, you know, from just a sensor, um, the different light changed and like smoke machines. And it really started to get deep into like that. So this sense of um, the sensorial aspects of design that get people really start to transport them into new places. Okay. So I heard that uh, there's some great use of virtual reality within the retail experience. Can you, maybe you can expand on that? Yes, yes. Um, surprisingly, uh, the Harry Potter VR experience in the store opened the day that I went. So I wasn't able to secure a ticket on my own, but they also told me uh, that it was a two month wait time. Uh, just by nature of having a ride inside the store, one that they can advertise to people when they're walking in and they want to come back a couple months later when they're visiting, it was really powerful. Um, there was a lot of anticipation behind this VR experience. To give you guys a sense, we're going to take you through a video that describes the experience from one of the store associates that was a huge fan. Um, but you uh, learn how to play Quidditch and you are flying on a broomstick um, just like you would in the films. So this is a 45 minute flight and they change out the content and the VR um, every couple months. So they were also getting people excited through previews of what the next VR experience would just like when you were at the movies. So it was awesome. Wish I did it myself, um, but you can see here that there's a lot of anticipation around this aspect of the store. All right, what is this? This is our VR experience. So this one is for Wizards Take Flight. So with this, you get to be on a broomstick and you get to fly around Hogwarts, you get to fly around London, and maybe see some of our friends from the Harry Potter universe. We also have one right upstairs uh, called Chaos of Hogwarts where you get to walk all around the castle. And when I say all around, it's all around the castle. You get to go into some of the house rooms. You get to go in the Great Hall. It's really exciting. <laughs> wow, it's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's sold out right now? It is basis so wow. uh, tickets should be released soon if you go on the website you can sign up for a newsletter and I'll tell you when the next tickets are released that was amazing to watch what else does the store have so you'll notice, you can actually get a peek of it in this video. Um, you'll notice that behind, right behind, so this is to the left of the pop-in store, um, to the left of the pop-in store and behind, you have two new experiences. Um, one is the personalization shop, which is probably the most exciting part of the store um, outside of the app experience that I walked you guys through earlier. The personalization people go, I mean, they are so gun ho about this. Um, the personalization shop had a sense of um, it, you were able to not only personalize wands, which, which were advertised on the first floor for people to come downstairs. But the coolest part of it that I think a lot of people on this call can learn from is there is actually bundle boxes that you can create. So gifting was a major aspect of the personalization shop. I think a lot of retailers can integrate into their own stores depending on the products that they sell. Here you were able to get a chest um, that gave you $70 off of individual products that could each be customized. Um, those items were placed in a chest and uh, you can even import, you can even engrave your name on the actual chest. So it was like a perfect gifted experience if you're in New York and someone wasn't able to come to the store um, as a way to leverage that personalization and get a lot done at once. Um, that there was, I mean, that's another pretty long wait list, um, but was a very exciting aspect to that shop. Um, another thing that I want to talk about, which is near the personalization area of the store is right here, which is the jewelry. Uh, the jewelry store. Um, this leveraged two partnerships that I thought were really interesting. Um, the Harry Potter network, they didn't necessarily have jewelry of their own. So they partnered with Schwarzky Crystals to create custom limited edition jewelry, as well as Alex and Ani, um, which is uh, more of a D to C jewelry brand. So they had a legacy and a young player in the industry coming in and taking advantage of the Harry Potter fan base. So it's really cool. You can see how incredible the jewelry is. A lot of it just is very is subtle with the integration of the, the franchise, um, which to me brings a lot of longevity behind the products that they're selling. Gab Beta, that's, uh, it's been a great experience. And I know there's plenty more that you want to tell us. In the second part of this video, um, I think you're going to talk us through the design features and your other takeaways from the experience, yes? 
Yes. Yes. I'd love to. I, uh, I was a kid in the candy store. So <laughs> there's a lot. To so uh, look out for the uh, second part of this video. Uh, but I appreciate your time so far. Gab Bader, founder, uh, creative director of uh, Whereabouts Studio. Thank you for having me.